What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the brand new Adidas EQT Cushion ADV. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. Make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter, at RealSethFowler. This video isn't sponsored, but I just wanted to thank the guys over at Plain Tea Co. from Astoria, New York for sending over this shirt. It's this really nice wide neck t-shirt made out of, I believe, 94% cotton, I think. It's super stretchy and it's super comfortable. And if you guys are ready for an awful segue, it matches with the shoes that I'm reviewing today. So without further ado, here they are, the Adidas EQT Cushion ADV. That's a lot of letters. This is a pretty interesting new silhouette from Adidas. It's actually based on the their original EQT 91 model. And right off the bat, you'll notice some similarities between the EQTs and the NMDs. However, as the name would suggest, this doesn't actually have boost. So the real question is, how comfortable are these guys? We'll get to that in a bit. But starting off with the upper, because this is a budget model shoe at 130 bucks, you don't get any prime on the upper, it's more of the soft mesh. If you've seen some of the other mesh EQTs in hand, you know exactly how these feel. Pretty soft, pretty stretchy, but it's not prime knit. As I mentioned, the black mesh covers the entire upper of the shoe. You do have some fused overlay accents around the toe cap area. I'm not sure if that really helps durability. I'm assuming it's just more there for aesthetics. When you look at the toe straight on, you notice that the fuse overlays kind of create a zigzag pattern. Interesting, yes, necessary, probably not. Moving back on the sneaker, you've got these flat black laces running through these semi-translucent black TPU eyelets. It's almost the exact same material that you find on the Ultra Boost 3.0's cage. I'm just not really a fan of the shape of it, to be honest. Moving up the sneaker, you've got your thin black tongue that sort of looks like a separate tongue. However, it's actually attached to the shoe at the side of the shoe. Not like a regular separate tongue, which is usually attached just at the base of the tongue. This is attached all the way down the side. Not that it really makes a difference. I just wanted to clarify because it's not like your usual tongue. Of course, at the top of it, you've got this Adidas tag and the sort of rubber or plasticky material that says equipment 9117 ADV. Inside the sneaker you find the Ortholite insole which turns out to be one of the biggest selling points of the sneaker and the reason I know that is because they actually provide a tag that tells you it's an Ortholite insole when you buy the sneaker. The insole itself is pretty comfortable, it's not removable or at least I wasn't able to really pry it out in the time that I had, but it's green. So that's nice. I mean, it's a decent insole. It doesn't provide any crazy extra comfort. I mean, if you like Ortholite insoles, then you might be drawn to this shoe, but I wasn't blown away. As for fit, this shoe fit me a little bit weird. I have narrow feet, and it really did seem to fit nice and snug around the midfoot. However, it did feel a little bit long, so I had some room in the toe. Throughout the day, it did mold to my foot pretty nicely, but it wasn't anything crazy. If you're trying to grab a pair of these for yourself, if you have wider feet, I'd probably suggest going true to size. If you have more narrow feet, maybe go down half a size. I'm really not sure what size is best for this sneaker, because the fit is kind of weird. So if you have a chance to try these guys on for yourself, make sure to do that just to make sure it's the right fit for you. Continuing back on the sneaker, you've got these three nylon straps in black that form the three stripes. You've also got this thin piece of black nubuck that starts in the midfoot and wraps all the way around to the other side of the shoe. It's got a couple ventilation holes in it, but it doesn't really make a difference. Sewn on to the nubuck in the same material as the eyelets, you've got a TPU heel counter. And it's fine, no complaints or praise. It's it's just there. Around the back of the shoe on the heel, you find the white stitching that you find on a lot of other EQTs that have dropped recently. This back heel tab is surprisingly stiff, and I think that's in part due to the stitching, but also because there seems to be some sort of like substrate underneath. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Doesn't affect the shoe too much. I kind of would have preferred if it was softer because it'd be a little bit more comfortable, but it's not a big deal. Moving down the shoe, you get to the part of the sneaker that I was most intrigued by, this EVA midsole. Now, obviously the shoe is called the Cushion ADV, which led me to believe that this is some sort of advanced cushion. And uh, I've got to be honest, um, it kind of sucked. The only real comfort that I got from the midsole was really from the Ortholite insole and kind of had nothing to do with the midsole. It's definitely stiff, so you got a lot of responsiveness, but that's not really what I'm looking for from a lifestyle sneaker. And it's pretty thick too, which didn't seem to make a difference. It still felt very stiff and not really uncomfortable, but definitely not what I'd expect from a shoe that's called the Cushion ADV. In addition to the white EVA foam, you've also got these gray accents similar to what you find on the NMDs. They're interesting. I think they're mainly aesthetic. I'm not sure exactly what they do or if they they help the midsole be any more or less comfortable. To be honest though, I don't think it hurts that this has some resemblance to the NMD. That's initially why I looked at the shoe and even considered buying it, so good on them for taking a design cue and using it as a selling point. Finally, moving to the outsole of the shoe, you've got this black herringbone outsole. In the middle of the sneaker, you've got this white channel with these sort of nubs in it that kind of lead up to this large, almost bowl shape. And man, I, I didn't think much of it, but then I started walking in the shoe and every time I stood on like a hard surface, it made this really weird like suction cup sound. It was really, really weird. It was something that I did not expect. It's kind of like when you cup your hand and like slap it on a window. It was, it's a really, really weird sound. Um, it wasn't too loud, but it was definitely something that I noticed. Why this weird indented bowl shape is there, 
I, I have no clue, but hey, it's there and uh, not much you can do about it. Overall, the EQT Cushion ADV, comfort-wise, leaves a lot to be desired, at least in my opinion. Yes, it's a budget model at 130 bucks, but let's be honest, there are a lot of other great Adidas sneakers that are a lot more comfortable. For example, the Dame line, back when it was called the D Lillard 2, it was 105 bucks and it was super comfortable. I don't know, I'm not really sold on the sneaker. One thing I will say that's kind of going for it is that it definitely has a clean aesthetic. It's not a bad looking shoe, but for 130 bucks, there are other sneakers that I would rather have. Now that we've got the review out of the way, let's put these guys on feet and see how they look. Make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know what you think of the EQT Cushion ADV and if you're planning to grab a pair for yourself. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to me, Seth Fowler, if you want to see more content just like this. And follow me in all other forms of social media, at Real Seth Fowler. The links will be in the description below.